In a quiet corner of Ireland, a tragic and chilling incident shook the nation. On a quiet evening, the peaceful environment shattered, triggering one of the most harrowing events in recent Irish history. Imagine how a normal routine day suddenly changes into a terrible nightmare and takes a turn in everything around. This is the story of the highest profile case that unfolded in Ireland. This documentary delves into the heart-wrenching story of Justin Valdez, a young woman whose life was tragically cut short when she was doing her daily routine work. Sounds so simple, but it's all tangled in mysteries and twists that'll keep you in awe. This incident took place on May 19th when Justin was walking back home after a gym workout that ended at 4.20 p.m. that evening. What happened later is something even we can't believe. Keep watching till the end as we're going to unveil the truth behind this dreadful story, shedding light on the impacts on the public and the details that caused deep fear across every corner of Ireland. Most cruel of all is the feeling that there were chances lost to stop Justin's kidnapper and murderer when she first vanished from the side of the road. She was supposed to go back home, but her mother ordered her to buy some bread while returning. After doing her shopping, she went to the bus stop and boarded one. She got off the bus just after 6 in the evening on Saturday and started to walk along the R760 Kilcrony Road in the direction of her house in Enniscary. The walk from the bus stop to her home was around 15 to 20 minutes. It wasn't difficult to walk as she was young and active. As she was returning routinely, she knew the area well. But that day, Justin never returned home. Her mother was waiting for her at home anxiously. As it was late and she wasn't home, she called Justin and sent her text messages. But to no response, she headed out of her house and searched all the way to the bus stop. She asked a few people around if they had seen Justin, but she came to know that she was last seen when she got off the bus and was headed in her home's direction. After that, she vanished into thin air, and nobody saw any trace of her later that evening. Her mother then called the police in desperation after not finding her daughter. The detectives then took her statement and began searching for Justin in the area. Detectives started their investigation into her personal life and assumed she had run away from home. Cut to the past, she was born in the Philippines in a not-so-sound financially stable family. But as she was the only child, the parents were willing to do anything to make their child happy. Three years ago, Justin moved to Anniscary Ireland in an attempt to better her own life. Dr. Kenneth Carroll, the college registrar, stated that she was a first-year part-time finance and accounting undergraduate at the Institute of Technology, Tullect. Anniscary is a beautiful and serene place with less than a population of 2,000. She also got a part-time job as a waiter at a restaurant to help ease the financial burden on her parents and to finance her studies. She also babysat and cared for the children in the neighborhood. All three of them were far from home, but her mother and father were also staying there, keeping close to their only child. The girl was very responsible and cared for her parents, so no one believed that she could run away from her home, leaving her parents, whom she loved so much. Owing to her busy schedule, she had very few friends in Ireland. The police called all her acquaintances to investigate about her life, but they couldn't find any solid traces or pieces of evidence about her disappearance. She would always inform every little thing to her parents. Even that day, if she was late, she would have informed her parents. That day, too, she exchanged 63 texts with her mother. Her last text was 6.24 p.m. As the detectives were doing their investigation, they got a very important lead to the case. According to a witness, a woman that evening was allegedly assaulted by a man who hit her in the head before pushing her into the backseat of what she described as a dark-colored SUV while she was being driven by in a car with her son. To surprise this happened just a few minutes after Justin got off the bus. The girl had dark hair and was Asian. When the driver noticed that the car was stopped in the middle of the road without any lights or blinkers on, she pulled to pass it and overtook it. While doing so, she heard screaming and then shouting and noticed a girl staring at her from the trunk of the car. After the motorist stopped, she immediately called the police. A few minutes later, a male witness who was also traveling close by noticed what he thought to be a distraught woman being taken away as a passenger in an SUV. 
After returning home and talking to his wife about it, he reported what he had witnessed to the Garda since he thought it was weird. Gardai now thinks that what the witnesses observed was a man assaulting and driving Justin away to her death. But when the initial two reports were received on Saturday night, the Garda only had a partial registration, 171D for a 4x4 or Nissan SUV to go on. Justin's parents called the Garda and reported their daughter missing at 11.30pm, which is when the eyewitness reports became more clear. The eyewitness descriptions, such as they were, matched Justin's and linked to the same area where Justin would have been. Although Gardai had spent Saturday night inspecting the roadside stretch that the initial witness had identified as the abduction area, they had discovered nothing. Officers headed down the road where the initial witness claimed to have seen a man putting a female in his car. Along with Justin's broken phone, they found a bag of bread. The police thought Justin was seriously injured. To locate her, patrol cars and helicopters were sent out. As darkness fell on Saturday, Justin was nowhere to be seen. But at 3 in the morning the next day, the police got a break. They recognized the man behind the wheel of the Nissan, Hennessy Mark. After the identification of the SUV or 4x4 as a Nissan Qashqai with registration number 171D-20419 in CCTV footage acquired by the Garda, the case was placed in height notice. Gardai went to the registered owner's house in the Woodbrook Estate in Bray after identifying her. The owner, Nicola, a married mother of two young children, claimed that on Saturday afternoon, her husband, Mark Hennessy, had left in the car but had not returned. He worked on construction sites as a banker. It was September of last year when his youngest daughter was born. Nicola spoke with the police. She reported to the police that Saturday afternoon, she had seen Mark. He arrived at work at 7.30 in the morning. That afternoon, he came home shortly after 3 p.m. and sat out again at 5 p.m. Gardai knew they had their man with this information. Instead, they knew who he was but were still in the dark about where he was. Also, they were in the dark about where he had taken Justin and what exactly he had done with her. When the police went to the pub, they were able to confirm that Mark stopped by on Saturday, even if at first he only stayed for about 10 minutes to watch football. His car was parked in the parking lot when he was captured on camera, leaving the pub at 5.41 p.m. Two minutes later, he was gone in his car, looking like he was on the phone. He was following Justin's 185 bus for 30 minutes after that. This was confirmed by the bus's CCTV footage. He went back to the pub that evening around 11 p.m. After chatting with a few people who knew his family at the pub store, he walked out. What did Mark do between 5.41 p.m. and 11 p.m.? More importantly, where was Justin? Several public appeals were made, initially through media releases and then on Sunday at a press conference held at the Bray Garda station. It was given along with a description of Justin and the Kashkai that the Gardai were searching for. If anyone saw the car, they were asked to report it to the Garda, but they were urged not to go near the driver. It took many hours for armed Gardai to respond to a public tip and visit Cherrywood Industrial Estate to investigate a reported sighting. The evidence was solid when the police arrived. Mark was sitting in his car's driver's seat. Blood was all over him. It was his blood. He had used a Stanley knife to cut himself. He was shot by a police bullet that hit his shoulder during an encounter. For a while on Sunday night, it wasn't clear if Hennessy was alive or dead and if Justin was in the Kashkai with him. But shortly, the shocking truth became clear. Hennessy was dead and Justin was nowhere to be found. She was still missing. However, Gardai assumed that she had been kidnapped for sexual purposes and now feared her death. The history of the Kashkai's movements was available through the electronic controls that could be downloaded. In the car, there was a note with blood on it. Though it was blurry, the cops were able to make out the terms sorry in Puck's castle. Police searched the area as a result. After receiving such information, the Garda closed off a significant search area in South County, Dublin's Rath Michael. There, the search was intensified after Justin's purse with her identity card was discovered next to a pitch and putt course. 
A team made up of Gardai and personnel from Civil Defense and Defense Forces began searching the area. There was also the jarring use of cadaver dogs in the Garda helicopter. Cheston's body was discovered in the early afternoon in the underbrush at Puck's Castle, some 50 meters off a small road. And then before the news of the tragic event reached the public, the Garda took off to tell her parents. That night, Cheston's body was still there, hidden by thick undergrowth in the country she had traveled hundreds of miles to escape for a better life. Asphyxia from manual strangling was the cause of death, and pathologist Dr. Linda Mulligan concluded that the death took place on Saturday, May 19th. The pathologist found signs of vaginal area abrasions and bruises. Evidence of a small amount of cocaine used within a few hours of death was discovered in a toxicology result. The jury found that the death was unlawful. Dr. Myra Cullinan, the coroner, called Justin's death thoroughly shocking and appreciated the parents' grace during their loss. The investigator who was hunting the monster who kidnapped and killed Justin Valdez believes that the monster was fascinated with her and had practiced the kidnapping beforehand. In addition to revealing publicly for the first time that he thinks Mark Hennessy sexually abused the student before killing her and disposing of her lifeless body in dense gorse in South County, Dublin, retired Detective Superintendent Frank Keenahan also discussed his frantic hunt for Justin. It is shocking, frightening, and horrifying that they could travel to one of the safest and warmest nations on Earth and yet fall victim to the most heinous crimes. It may never be completely clear how or why it happened. Both Justin and her alleged killer, 40-year-old builder and dad of two, Mark Hennessy, are gone, and the Garda think that only they could give details about the exact events that took place. There is no known connection between the two that the Garda have been able to uncover. If it turns out to be true, it would imply that Justin was taken away from the side of a road in County Wicklow and killed on the whim of the moment by a predatory killer. Of course, he may have seen her working in the restaurant where she worked part-time or walking down that road when she got off the bus before, but there had been no contact between them and it appeared to be a completely random abduction and subsequent murder. What then had caused a married father of two young kids to violently take the life of a diligent young woman who worked hard for her parents? Mark seemed to have more of a dark side than most people knew. Given the charges made against him, it is likely that the trace amounts of cocaine in Justin's system were caused by his heavy cocaine use. His debt and the collapse of his marriage were causing his life to spin out of control. He had even signed up for dating apps and had started to approach women at bars. However, for some reason, on May 19th, Mark decided to kidnap Justin as she walked home innocently with the bread she had just gotten for her mother. All of this happened during the day on a street that was frequented by cars. The terrible evil that filled their life that day will always be with Justin's parents. Justin was our life, and when she was taken away, our world ended. We try to smile, but in our hearts, we're still crying. The heartbroken parents claim that they still make their child a plate of food each night and set up a pillow for her before they go to sleep. Danilo Valdez expressed his shock to the Irish mayor, saying, quote, I still can't believe that my kid is no longer here to talk about our plans for the future. He also expressed his hope that the incident was a horrible dream. They, as well as Justin's relatives in the Philippines, loved her very much. The whole story of that day will never come to light because Mark is dead. But at least we now know that Justin, a selfless woman who devoted her life to helping others, was viciously killed by a man she had never met.